Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to make a simple Mad Libs program in JavaScript. So for those of you who haven't played Mad Libs in a while, uh, you may recall that that is where somebody will ask you for things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and you will fill in a word of your choice and then those words will be created to make a simple story that's supposed to be funny and silly and all that. Very popular with the young children crowd. So this will be the next activity for us and we're gonna use a lot of the same um, prompts and variables and strings and arrays that we've been talking about recently. Okay, so uh, using variables, alerts, prompts, document.write, strings, string methods, arrays, array methods, we're gonna create a Mad Lib style game. Now I know at first that might seem overwhelming to everybody, but I want you to start trying to get your brain to think about how to think like a programmer. And that means that you have to get everything prepared. And for this example, truly one of the hardest parts of this is coming up with your story, okay, that you want to have your Mad Lib about. So here's mine. I'm deciding to do it on my dream job. And so I'm going to, I'm going to have these underlined words are going to be the inputs that I'm going to ask for. So I'm going to ask for your name, occupation, a number, an expression, a verb, an adjective, and a plural noun. So take some time, come up with your own little story, anywhere from five to eight inputs is great. If you really want to get more creative than that, you can. But um, five to eight, I think, is a good is a good uh, number to shoot for. Okay. All right. So now that we have our story and we have an idea what we want, let's go ahead and name our variables that we're going to be asking for. So I just went back to my story, and I created variable names out of everything. So I've got your name, occupation, salary expression, your expression, verb, adjective, and plural noun, and I make sure my variables are in the correct legal variable naming format. Uh, if you're concerned about any words being reserved words in JavaScript, then go ahead and change them into something else. All right, now think about what all of the data types are going to be. In most cases, they're going to be strings. I am inputting a, having them input a salary or a number. And in that case, I'm just gonna bring it over as a string. I could technically turn that into an int if I wanted to, but to keep things simple for this, I'm just gonna bring everything in as a string, which is the default for prompt anyway. Okay, so start with what you know. So the best advice that I have for you is to break things down into easy pieces and start with what you know. So we've got our story, we've got our variables. The next logical step is we need to have a prompt that's going to assign inputs to all the variables that we have identified. So um, go ahead and do that now. I have created my list with my prompts and I'm not gonna copy and paste this because these um, quotation marks are not the correct style for copying and pasting. So I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna type all of my variables and prompts in right now and I encourage you to do the same thing. Okay, oops, I found one little typo here. I'm gonna take a look at my code here. Okay, so I've got prompt enter your name. I did make a slight change. I changed my enter number between two and 100. And I changed around some of the wording a little bit, but everything's pretty much the same. So here I have done prompts and assigned variables. Everybody should be good with that. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I wanna print my story to the screen. So I need to go back and get the story that I wrote and I need to use document.write to take that story output 
and place it onto the web page. So I'm going to I want to use document.write. I don't want to alert my story because that's going to be a lot to read. I want it to come up in the preview window. So I'm going to do a little bit of work with my HTML here and I'm going to create a h1 and I'm going to put a name to my story. So um, your new career. Okay. And because I like to make things pretty, I'm going to just add a little tiny bit of CSS by placing a 10% margin, putting a background color in here. I'm feeling like purple it is today. And because I'm using a dark color, I'm going to change my font to a light color. And I'm going to use Arial. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to text align my H1. Okay, so you're not going to see any of that come up until I click start. And before I click start, I want to use document.write to output everything. So document.write <coughs> is going to create my story. Again, I already have my story written down and I'm going to write it out with my variables. So you're going to be using a lot of plus signs for concatenation. One thing to keep in mind is that you're going to want to put a space between your variable and the next word. So keep that in mind. Everything should look good. See, oops, right here in my example, I'm missing a space there after and. So go ahead and push pause and create that document.write to output all of your inputs into your story. Okay, let's go ahead and see if I typed this incorrectly. I did realize that I have the adjective and the plural noun right next to each other. I needed to put a space in here. So you'll see the plus a space plus the plural noun. Okay, I haven't tested this yet. So let's go ahead and give this a test. Let me save this. Okay, here we go. I'm going to enter my name, um, enter an occupation. Um, I'm going to say professor. Yeah, I'm trying to be creative here. Enter a number between two. I'm going to say 25. A saying or expression. This isn't as fun since I already know what my story is going to be. It's kind of hard not to not to influence my things here. Um, I'm going to say hot diggity dog. An action verb not ending in ing. Drive. An adjective. Fluffy. And clouds. All right, so here we go. Let's see if this worked. So I've got my background, my CSS is coming up here, your new career. Dina just got offered a new job as a professor making $25 per hour. Hot diggity dog, you say. Your job requires you to drive and make fluffy clouds. So again, very uh, simple, nothing too exciting here. Um, this is me doing the first part of this activity. Now, because I like you guys to build upon everything you learn, we're going to go ahead and take it to the next level. And how are we going to do that? So I want you to have more experience using the random math function. And the way we're going to make this more exciting is we're going to, instead of just creating this uh, variable and having the input show up in our Mad Libs, we're going to make it a little sillier by adding their input to an array that we have already placed a couple options in. Okay, so for example, for occupation, oh look, I used professor again. Very, I'm very not creative here. So whatever someone puts in, so let's say they put in pilot, um, when we create our array, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use our prompt. We're going to take that value that they have input and we're going to actually just include it in our array with two other options that we've created. Now, again, 
This is where you can get creative. You can put as many options in your array as you want. It does not have to be limited to just three. So if you really want to make it random, you know, maybe you have five options or something like that. Okay. So after you have that array built and you're going to have to build an array for every single one of these, you're going to have to program the random aspect of the, the picking the index of the item so that it will output that particular value. Okay, so again, here is our array. So we've assigned our array with our uh, variable input and two other values. Now, the first thing we need to do to get to use that random number is we need to determine how many items are in the array. And we can do that using the length property. Okay, so this is a property and not a method or a function. And you can tell the difference because there's no parentheses at the end. Okay, so length is just a property. It's just a value that is associated with this array. And in this case, how many items are you going to have? You're going to have three. Remember your index starts at zero and then this is going to be one and this is going to be two. So when we do occupation count, we're going to get a three returned in this example. Then in order to do our randomness, we're going to use math.random. Math and remember math.random is going to return a value, a, a decimal value between zero and one. So let's say it selects 0.5. And then we have our, our length, which is we've already agreed to three. So this is going to be 0.5 times three, which is going to give us 1.5. And that's why we're pulling the math.floor because we want it to go down one. So math.floor would basically get rid of the 0.5 and our 1.5 and it would return number one, index one, which is going to be professor. It's going to be the second item in our list because we have zero, one, two. Okay. So you want to do math.floor and not math.ceiling because we don't want this to go up one. We always want it to come down one to help that um, offset that zero that starts our array. Okay, so you have everything right here to finish your program. And I want you to go ahead and build your random Mad Lib, lib generator based off of the example I just gave you. So this one will work for one of your variable inputs, but you'll need to do the same thing for every single one of them. And if you're really clever, you might be able to determine how you can actually put that all into one particular uh, statement instead of two. Okay, so we're actually grabbing the length here and then we're grabbing the randomness. You can actually take that occupation array dot length and put it in where I have occupation count um, directly into our random. So you don't even need this part, but I just wanted you to see the steps and how that worked. Okay, so good luck and I'm very excited to see what you come up with. Uh, if you are a student in my class, we will definitely be sharing this. If you are a YouTube watcher, uh, please send a comment with the cool Mad Libs that you've created today. Thanks. Bye.